How are you going? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are interested, I am talking to my co-host, Keith Harrison. Commemorations yes, we are Peel's like manager. Company, co- a couple, we do argue, we do fight, <laughs> but then he always buys me a beer afterwards. Oscar so and Felix. Right. Yeah. How are you going, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Thank you. Yep. Our good. phone number at State Branch is 81007300. Website, rslsa.org.au. Still. Email admin at rslsa.org.au. And we're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And that's all good. Yep. Of course, the RSL employment program launched last week so yeah. if you are someone uh, ex-defence or transitioning out um, and, and don't have an arrangements uh, long-term arrangements uh, please give it a uh, an opportunity contact uh, uh, the rsl through the website rslsa.org.au and uh, kick it off someone out there's looking for you that's right I've got a lot of people looking for me. It's not the police. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. Now, speaking of the police, now we've yes. got two guests. They've right. come back. They've been very gracious with their time. So, Major Sharon Maskeldeer, once again, thank you for coming back. Colonel Graham Goodwin, thank you for coming back. It's really good to see you again. Thank it's you for having very, having us. Very, very uh, interesting last you. week yes, talking was. about the Have you had a hectic week? fire assist. <laughs> not putting you on the spot? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's always hectic, yes, and well. uh, we still have a lot of work to yeah. to do, uh, and a, and a lot of work to do in the community. So, uh, but it's good work, and it's very rewarding yeah. work. Excellent. Have, have there been good lessons come out of it? Because it, it, I'm sure it's a very well oiled machine, but it, when you've got so many moving parts and people and things like that, things won't always go according to plan. Perhaps before Graham answers, yeah. we just need, may need to remind people that. Graham came in last week and was talking about the fire relief on Kangaroo Island and um, and Cudley Creek at Adelaide Hills. The Adelaide yeah, Hills, yeah. yes. So Graham, I'm sorry, but, but just want to make okay. sure people knew that. What I'd like to do um, is probably just kick off because last week we were talking about the water purification yep. you know, system down at Kangaroo Island. Uh, that's been packed up, very successful. That's all been packed up and sent um, uh, back into state. I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a quick overview Excellent. of ha- how we're actually uh, structured on the ground uh, throughout Australia because there's, yeah. there's, there's three joint task forces. Uh, there's Joint Task Force 646 in Victoria, uh, and we know the devastation they, mm. they confronted there. Mm. Uh, Joint Task Force 1110 in New South Wales. And, and you know, just very recently they're contending with uh, fires around Canberra uh, and also flooding and the like. And, and our task force, uh, 1111, uh, and, and we're located pro- primarily in, in the locations of the Adelaide Hills based around Cogley Creek and the Low Before uh, Recovery Centre uh, and also on Kangaroo Island because we saw the devastation but in both of those those uh, areas there. So that, that's how we're sort of laid out on the, on the ground. Um, we are in the recovery phase. Uh, we are but very clear to, uh, you know, we'll stay as long as we're needed to assist uh, the communities to get back on their, on their feet. But when you talk about lessons learnt... Um, yeah, there's always uh, a lot of lessons to learn, you know, uh, and uh, not only do we look at that from uh, uh, the equipment that we supply and how we use that equipment and do we have enough of it and do we have enough of the trained people and all the rest of it, but it's also our interoperability, you know, working with other uh, services, um, both community groups, government uh, state, federal, uh, and the like. Um, we learn a lot from that, and uh, I, I think one of the big takeaways from this whole operation is is uh, this is uh, you know working with those agencies, seeing the work that they do uh, has uh, you know it's inspiring. Uh, so um, we, we're looking to see what else we can do in in, in that space because. I think, as I said last week, um, you know, this will occur again, unfortunately, yeah, in, in, so, right. in some locations. So the better prepared that we can be uh, in, you know, particularly at times of the year and all the rest of it, the better prepared we can be, hopefully we will be of better service to the local community. Excellent. So procedures get rewritten or revisited perhaps, I suppose. There's, there's no one size fits all or procedure fits all because we've got different terrain, we've got different climates. Yeah. 
so many variables. Yeah, I, but I think it's I think it uh, not only is it the, the written word and the books and the like. Uh, you know, when 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 the call is made, you don't often have time uh, to to go back to a to a book or, or whatever. You know, this is very much about relationships. And, Excellent, and so. Partnerships, yeah, partnerships, relationships, uh, David, precisely. So, you know, we're going to be very enthusiastic uh, in our, you know, when we do exercises throughout the year, when we when we do practice our things, when we do our planning activities, we're going to make sure that, the, that those people, those right people, are all around the table. So, you know, even though when when in the in the the heat of things and they and you've got to get going and and the like. You may not know precisely how things are going to work out, but at least you'll know who to talk to and uh, who to who to pick up the phone. Good to opportunity to observe people and monitor them as well, because uh, when you're doing the same drills and training regularly, you, you sort of know what to expect from people. But with this, in a different scenario, uh, you'll see. I'm not saying anyone will fail, but you'll probably see some bloom and come to the fore. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Look. Look, uh, uh, how could anyone not be impressed with the firefighters, um, you know, state emergency services, the the volunteers who support them and all the rest of it? National Parks and Wildlife and and the the animal volunteers too, amazing. It's a, a, um, um, uh, you know, if that doesn't uh, inspire you to uh, get up and uh, lend a hand, I, I don't know what would. And uh, and and it's quite rightly that uh, you know Australia and the world. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of people, a lot of international forces come uh, to, to to assist. You know, the New Fiji, Zealand, New Zealand, oh, Zealand. Um, yeah. some of the Asian ones. Yeah, I actually have a Probably friend. New Guinea who lives up in Michigan in the US, Hmm. and she sent me an email. Her sister wants to take some time off from work in the US to come out to Kangaroo Island and to help look after koalas. And I don't know that it's feasible, and I doubt very much that it will be because of what they have to go through for training and the short period of time that she can spare. But the thought was there, and it was genuine. It's just Mm -hmm. amazing. Well, it's it's an iconic symbol. Mm -hmm. Yes, Uh, it is. And, uh, you know... Nobody wants to see an animal suffer no. or, or or be hurt or injured and, and all the rest of it. So um, I can guarantee you uh, that was probably at the top of all the lists of the soldiers <laughs> to uh, assist in the animals. <laughs> Some uh, great soldiers. photos of yes, diggers yeah. lined up, yes, each with a koala or a wallaby or something like that. Yeah. And, um, and so everybody's them. had, uh, you know, exposure to that. But, you know, that's it's a very important part. Uh, um, but you know, but there's, as I say, and as I said last week, there's also a lot of other uh, things that we need to do to to, to help people uh, not only come to terms, but uh, so that they can get on with their lives. Excellent. Oh well, congratulations to the defence people. Oh, I wonder was Sharon involved? Well, I was just going to ask Sharon. You've been involved in, in the fires as well, in, in more from an admin point of view. At, at Keswick, what, what what was your experience? Well, indeed, you just mentioned that photograph. You just talked about the photograph of the diggers lined up holding the koalas. Mm. Now, um, what's interesting is there's a whole history to that photo. In fact, because um, I've been looking after running the public affairs cell and I've had some wonderful photographers, videographers and aspiring young um, embedded media people working with us over the last uh, two months and indeed we got tipped off that this photo existed and in fact it was one of our young lieutenants who'd taken the photograph and we heard about it and we thought that sounds awesome let's see if we can get hold of that photo and and this person was very generous and said yeah sure we can pop it on Facebook so we did and would you believe as a result of that one photograph largely because of international attention it so far got 13.5 million Crikey. million views and as a direct result of that photograph our Facebook that office is now retired <laughs> <laughs> our Facebook following yeah. for Nine Brigade went overnight literally yeah. from around 4,000 at the start of Operation Bushfire Assist we now have 23,000 followers yeah, that so that just shows you the yeah. power of a photograph yeah. the yes. power of a photograph yeah. it stuck in my mind uh, yeah. and, and the one of the chaps who um, had barista experience and, and and the general store was struggling to serve coffees and he 
went behind and helped out. <laughs> you know, so. You'd be, you, you know, uh, I, I thought I thought the popularity of the Facebook page was because of me. But anyway, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, look, you, you'd be surprised. You know, the the, the reservist. Um, you know, both fr- from the from all three services. Um, they come with skill sets mm. that, that uh, you know, it's only when you're confronted with, um, you know, this opportunity to, to then assist in many different ways and all the rest of it that people can actually uh, talk to the farmer, uh, erect a fence, uh, make a coffee. Uh, feed a koala. Do, do, do a uh, <laughs> feed the koala, yeah. uh, jump on the dozer yeah. uh, and, and all of those sorts of things. Um uh, some of the skill sets, uh, you know, uh, you know, and, and I'll give you an example where we were driving uh, once, and uh, and we were just talking to some of the soldiers, and and one of them said, "Well, in in my occupant, I'm a vet, uh, so." Uh, um, <laughs> well, no, you're going. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, it's it's one of those great things that uh, of the of the the part time force, uh, you also have civilian skills, and and a lot of times that is dealing with people which. Is just perfect for this environment. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yep. Uh, did you get to go away, Sharon? Uh, no, no, I was based at, at Keswick. Yeah. Um, that was where my responsibilities were, and I was very happy to be there. And um, but I just have to reiterate, as as Colonel Goodwin's outlined, just. I mean, just what a fantastic team we've had working on this operation. And it really has allowed lots of young people within Army um, who are reservists, who don't necessarily ever, would never have seen themselves necessarily going on operations. They've had the opportunity here in South Australia to put their training and their dedication to good use for their local community. And that sense for them of being able to give back and, and actually engage with the people that they care about, that they might live next door to, they may have a relation that perhaps has been affected by the fires and they've been able to directly contribute to the recovery effort. And Mm. just to be able to see that happening and how empowering and how wonderful it's been for people to to have that level of mateship and community Mm. engagement, it's it's just been been fantastic. Is is there a level of what we're down to now? Are we down to 10% of the the huge force or what... uh, because the stand down, it, yeah. it's been it's a stand down well, now, well, isn't it? If, if you call well, it that. Well, no. Effectively, what yeah. we're doing is is because of you know fires now being out, um, and it's more uh, it's in the recovery phase. The force has drawn down uh, to a point, and but in that though, what you have is more specialist skills, right? You know, chainsawing of trees to make sure they're you know clearing of roads. Uh, putting up signage, you know, to make roads safe again, doing those sort of more specialist things. So you don't need as uh, many people to do it. You know, across Australia, there's still still over 3,000 uh, okay. people involved. Uh, here bit, in yeah. South Australia, you know, we're still looking at uh, over the 700 oh, wow. uh, 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 member mark. Um, so, so, and that'll continue for as long as it's uh, required for. Yeah. Graham, did uh, the boys and girls up at uh, Woodside mm. assist in, in in this recovery operation? Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, um, the, the the group that's up at Woodside is, is based on the 16 Regiment yes. uh, headquarters, yeah. which is based out of Woodside. Um, now, you know, when we talk about uh, assisting the community and being a part of it. Well, they are the community up there. You know, yeah, they live up there. Right, the yes. fire came very close. They saw the devastation, uh, you know. So uh, for them, it's probably a little bit more personal, you know, in, in assisting that because they're the people they see. It's their community. The shops mm. and uh, the like. So, mm. you know, as Sharon's saying, being able to support those people, those other services and all the rest of it, it's a, it's a great deal of pride. Yeah. Well, there you are, folks. We've got a bit of a briefing from the people who were there. Yeah. Or who weren't. We'll have to invite you both back to come back <laughs> yes, again we'd love to uh, another time, back. Sharon. We'd Any love time. to bring you in with your Story Right hat on because uh, uh, you're important to the RSL Employment Program. So thank you both for coming in. Good night thank from you. me. Good night from us all. Thank you.